Hello EV fans, welcome back to EV's gallery. Hope you guys are doing well. From the latest industry updates to in-depth reviews of the hottest EV models, we are here to keep you charged with electrifying news and insights. We are thrilled to announce the launch of three exclusive membership levels on our channel, Spark, Voltage, and Gigawatt. Are you ready to supercharge your support and join an exclusive community of like-minded electric vehicle fans? Become a member of our channel today. By joining, you'll not only fuel our journey together but also unlock fantastic perks tailored just for you. So, if you haven't subscribed yet, now's the perfect time to join the EV revolution. Hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell to stay charged with the latest updates. Kevin Williams remembers honing his skills as a teenager without a driver's license on internet message boards and the newly introduced comment sections of websites like Motor Trend and Car and Driver. It was the mid-2000s, and Chrysler had just launched its first LX platform cars in the form of the Dodge Magnum and Chrysler 300. These big-bodied sedans, designed by Ralph Gillis with gunslit windows, were striking and marked the beginning of an era where good-looking cars had less than ideal visibility. Suddenly, having a high belt line with tiny windows became fashionable. Love it or hate it, this trend of smaller-than-usual windows has persisted, leading to its current extreme, where some designers have decided to eliminate windows entirely. Polestar's designers argued that the rear windshield of a modern SUV or crossover didn't contribute much to visibility and wouldn't be missed if replaced by a camera. Polestar invited Williams to challenge this claim by flying him to Madrid, Spain, and encouraging him to test its latest crossover coupe in the land of Ibericoham. The question, would he miss the rear window? The Polestar 4 is a significant model for the brand, arguably more so than the traditional Polestar 3 crossover. Polestar describes this model as a D-segment SUV coupe, targeting not just EVs like the Genesis GV60 or Tesla Model Y, but also IC models like the BMW X4. Despite this ambition, the Sino-Swedish brand has struggled to generate profits, partly due to its limited product lineup. While other EV brands have focused on SUVs, Polestar has persisted with an aging high-riding sedan as its sole showroom product. However, Polestar is now attempting to move beyond its, just a Volvo with a weird badge, identity with new, bespoke products and carve out a niche within parent company Geely's many brands. The Polestar May 2nd have been a rebranded version of the Volvo 40.2 concept, and the Polestar 3 could be seen as a sporty version of the forthcoming Volvo EX90 crossover, but the Polestar 4 aims to be different. For starters, it uses the SEA platform, Sustainable Experience Architecture, popularized by Geely and Zika models in China, rather than the Volvo-developed CMA or SPA2 platforms used by the Polestar 2 and Polestar 3, respectively. Additionally, it features a unique roofline and no rear window, making it an unusual proposition. With Volvo reducing its stake in Polestar and Geely increasing its share, this car could be a make-or-break model for the brand. It needs to prove itself in the market, a tall order for an unusual product from a relatively unknown brand. The Polestar 4 has some interesting styling quirks and concessions to create them. It rides on a platform mainly used by Chinese cars from a brand unfamiliar to most Americans and Europeans. However, it is notably cheaper than the slightly overpriced Polestar 3, increasing its appeal and hopefully attracting more buyers. The success of the Polestar 4 could be a test of the brand's worth within Geely. The company's own Zika brand offers superior performance products and outsells Polestar at a nearly 2 to 1 ratio. Polestar needs a winner, and a lot is riding on this unusual little car. The Polestar 4 shares many similarities with the Zika 001, both use the same SEA platform, specifically the SEA 1 variant. Williams saw early China market production Polestar 4s being assembled alongside the 001 at the Zika Intelligent Factory in Ningbo. The SEA platform, initially developed largely by Zeker, debuted with the 001 crossover coupe. US market Polestar 4s are expected to be produced at a new plant in South Korea. As a result, the Polestar 4 has similar mechanical specifications to the Zeker 001. It is available in either single-motor rear-wheel drive or dual-motor all-wheel drive configurations, with 272 horsepower or 544 horsepower, respectively. These motors are powered by a 94 kilowatt hours usable, 100 kilowatt hour gross battery, offering 300 miles in RWD form or 270 miles in AWD form. 
despite being built on the same line as the refreshed Ziku 001, the Polestar 4 is not mechanically identical. Instead of air suspension, it features magnetic-style active dampers, but only on the dual-motor AWD models. The Polestar 4 does not have the Zeker's Megacast single-unit rear chassis section or its 800-volt class architecture. It still uses a less sophisticated 400-volt class architecture. Like the Polestar 3, the Polestar 4 is intended to be a sporty option in its segment. It may not have the same advanced differentials as the Polestar 3, but the performance pack adds some driver-oriented features, such as Brembo brakes and an adjustable suspension. Despite the changes, the car remains a relative bargain. At a base price of $56,300, it is not much more expensive than the $51,300 Polestar 2 sedan. The Polestar 4 feels more than just a rebranded Zeke or Geely, although it does remind Williams of the pre-facelift drive of the Zeke 001 he experienced in New York. All the units available for testing were top-of-the-line dual-motor models with the performance pack. The Polestar 4 is an agile car that corners relatively flat, showcasing the SEA platform's prowess. There's plenty of grip, and from the driver's seat, it feels more like a low-slung sports car than a crossover. One downside is that the magnetic dampers transmit more road imperfections to the cabin compared to the air suspension in Zika cars. However, this doesn't mean the Polestar 4 has an unacceptable ride. Its ride is remarkably composed and refined, smooth and supple without being overly bouncy or overwhelmed by its weight. It feels like the most luxurious car in Polestar's lineup and the quietest, even compared to the pricier Polestar 3. Like all EVs with high horsepower figures, the Polestar 4 feels like it has every bit of its 544 horsepower available at all times. Full throttle accelerations can propel the car to 60 miles per hour in as little as 3.7 seconds, and it continues to pull hard to illegal speeds quickly. Unfortunately, the excellent powertrain is paired with a fairly vague brake pedal, which dampens some of Williams' backroads fun. So did the visibility. On Madrid streets, the Polestar 4 felt large and wide, which isn't inherently bad, but maneuvering it was frustrating due to the lack of a rear window. This was especially true in the city, where Williams constantly turned his head and checked his mirrors for pedestrians, cyclists, and other drivers. He drove defensively, trying to predict and stay ready for what others might do, but felt like he was missing crucial information from the rearview mirror. The replacement video stream fed to the rearview mirror lacked a sense of depth, making it hard to gauge the car's physical dimensions. This isn't a great feeling in a crowded European city. There's a lot to like about the Polestar 4, starting with its sumptuous, spacious interior. There's generous leg and hip room for both rows of passengers, and the seats are comfortable and highly adjustable. Unless you're unusually tall, Williams doesn't anticipate any driver having issues with comfort behind the wheel of the Polestar 4. The interior itself is well finished, arguably better than the Polestar 3. Fit and finish are excellent, and materials feel high quality, with soft touch plastic used wherever appropriate. For instance, the Polestar 4's lower dash area, specifically where the glove box is located, is soft and cushy, unlike the hard plastic in the Polestar 3. Considering the price difference, it seems like this should be the other way around. The Polestar 4 uses the same Google Android-based car infotainment setup as the Polestar 3, which is the most appealing interface in the business. While the Polestar 3's screen is portrait-style, Williams feels the Polestar 4's landscape orientation makes the design stand out more. The icons are bigger, and the hierarchy of the icons on the screen feels better resolved. He had some complaints about the Polestar 3's interface while driving, but the Polestar 4 feels easier to use. The car's orange and white branding, consistent typeface, and specially designed icons create a strong visual identity and user experience rarely seen in other brands. The solar system-themed ambient lighting adds a fun, unique touch that gives the car a personality beyond just electric coupe crossover. It's a snappy, good-looking interface. Polestar's designers insist that, in keeping with the coupe crossover theme, they needed to make the roofline as low as possible. However, they didn't want to compromise interior space or headroom, so they moved some structural members rearward, allowing them to lower the roofline. The rear windshield was sacrificed, but Polestar claims it wouldn't have done much anyway, and the camera system is a superior alternative. 
Polestar also says this allows the entire cargo area to be used since there's no window to account for external visibility. However, the car is not exceptionally low slung. Compared to its mechanical cousin, the Ziku 001, it is only six tenths of an inch lower. If we're being precise, sure, the Polestar 4 is lower than the Ziku 001, but the Ziku 001 has a normal rear windshield, even with a rear wiper, which is rare in the EV world these days. William supposes the Polestar 4 is lower than competitors like the Tesla Model Y, but it seems a lot of work was done on the platform for not much reduction. Thank you so much for joining us today. We love hearing your thoughts and insights, so don't forget to share your comments and feedback in the comments section below. Your engagement means a lot to us, and it keeps the conversation going. If you enjoyed today's content and want to stay updated with the latest news, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. That way, you won't miss out on any future updates.